Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com and today we're going to take a look at the hardware on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 from Verizon. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. So first off, this 7.7 .7 inch display, this Super AMOLED display is absolutely brilliant. Colors look really good on it and the color uh, Accuracy is really strong compared to a lot of the other um, devices that I've used out there, uh, especially for tablets. It can be uh, hit and miss uh, for that sort of content. And using some of the uh, relative pictures that I use in other reviews, comparing them to uh, this particular tablet with its color capabilities, uh, I have to say that the results have been uh, very pleasing uh, with color accuracy. It's hard to see here in this in this lighting and with this camera because we're getting some uh, white adjust as well from it but really the color accuracy is pretty decent it still has some uh, suffers from a little more blue tint than uh, expected just like the Samsung Galaxy S2 but overall I like the screen brightness and the blacks and the density of the, the colors and the pixels, it, it, it just looks really good on this 7.7 .7 inch screen and it's really easy to read text. You do have to do a little bit of zooming in uh, because the screen isn't as large, uh, but in the hand, I do really like a seven inch form factor. One thing I found though is that it's got a tiny, tiny bezel. Now, in the past, I've always said that, that, that a bezel is uh, can be problematic, but in this case, or rather the large bezel being problematic. In this case, the bezel being too small is actually makes it a little difficult for my largish hands when holding on to it to try to read a book. And with the back being a little slick without much grip here, it actually makes it a little uh, hard to hold on to and there's no place to really rest your finger without but at least with my large fingers, rest them on the without resting them on the screen, which then will cause problems if you're reading a book or that sort of thing. Going this way, holding it with two hands, no problem. Uh, it really comes down to holding it in the portrait mode rather than landscape. Now, turning it to between here and there, between portrait and landscape, you can see how slowly uh, this display turns. And it's really surprising because with this dual core processor, 1.4 gigahertz, uh, Exynos processor. It should be a lot faster than that and I tried loading up uh, a different launcher to see if it was the, the skin that Samsung had put on this that's causing the problem and it's it's really just the same. It, uh, even the widget without any widgets on there. I'm finding like the ro screen rotation and just the way that sometimes things pop up that it's just really sluggish. Now that could be due to honeycomb but I've used other honeycomb devices that don't seem to perform so sluggishly. Now, once you're in, in an app uh, and you're actually like scrolling around through things, I found that the, it's pretty a pretty snappy device opening up Netflix and watching content and playing games. It really is a snappy device in the uh, Quadrant and Linpack and, and Tutu scores are all really very high for this device so it's 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 a powerhouse of a machine it just doesn't feel like a powerhouse machine especially when you compare it to uh, your phone or an iPad or other devices we'll get back to more comparisons later volume rocker on the side is is easy enough to find it it was a, I have found a little trouble finding the power button I have a tendency to slide my finger up the side of the the side of the case looking for the the button there. And then looking at the the bottom of the connector, the speakers are uh, plenty loud enough. Even by themselves playing Netflix movies, it was, it's been very uh, nice. And while I don't like proprietary connectors, it is it seems to be the way that most folks are going, uh, especially with Samsung and Apple. So no complaints there other than you, know, you have to spec hair on a special cable and you don't get to use a standard micro USB as expected. On the side here, uh, one of the things that Apple does not have uh, that this device does is easily accessible micro SD card slot and then it does have the LTE device for because this is for Verizon, LTE in this uh, SIM card slot here. We mentioned in the unboxing that this device had a small dent in it and we'll try to get that in focus there. 
uh, this is the way this device uh, came unboxed. Uh, you know, it is review unit, so I, I imagine it's been used before. But as you can see there, it did take a ding pretty well, and not something I would have expected from this casing, but it is you know, rather thin metal. We also talked about the fact that uh, on the back here, there isn't much uh, pop and movement, although right here is a little bit of squish. I notice on the front of the screen, that, however, there is a little more flex. I don't know if you can hear that clicking there. And when you twist the vise, it's got some noticeable click and pop as well. Otherwise, it's put together very well. I do like the you know slightly beveled edges. Back on the front of the device, we've got the two megapixel front facing camera. It takes two megapixel style pictures. And on the back, we've got the three megapixel rear facing camera with a flash. Uh, unfortunately, this camera is pretty miserable even uh, especially the white balance is really off, especially if you use a flash. Uh, I took a couple pictures just before starting this this particular review, and the the colors were really really yellow when the flash was used. And if I set the the white balance to fluorescent, then the colors came out correctly, and those pictures will be in the final review. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 for Verizon has a 5100 milliamp hour battery. Found that the battery life has been very good. Uh, it, it, last as long as I would expect it to for this style of device. It doesn't seem to last as long as, say, uh, the, the iPad, um, but that's unsurprising, especially with the LTE radio in it. Got one gig of RAM and a 16 gigs of storage. Uh, the usable space on this device, we scroll there. So we've got a total space of 12.67 gigs, and it may be a little difficult to see that in this picture. And you can see what we've got loaded up here, and then we've got an insert SD card option down at the bottom. As mentioned in the unboxing, it's got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and the standard set of sensors and calibration capabilities of the gyroscope and the compass and GPS, etc. It also has, uh, as we talked about on the review, this, this IR port, if I can find it, that we'll talk about a little more in the software review, but it does work very well with the uh, devices that I tested with it. Uh, kind of a surprising addition for this style of device. While I've only been able to test the standard speeds, not the LTE speeds, the uh, 3G speeds from Verizon are right on par with what expected. I'm hoping to be able to get up to the LTE area and I'll post some uh, reviews on that speed after the fact, if it doesn't go up before the time of the review. Really, I'm excited to see more devices like this, the 7.7 inch size. They work very well, and I'm really hoping that Ice Cream Sandwich comes out for this soon, and hopefully that will resolve some of the, the stability issues. I had the camera crashing just a few minutes ago. We'll talk more about that in the software review. But really, this device just needs something to make it a little more appealing and a little more snappy, because compared to a lot of the other devices that are on the market today, it just doesn't fit the price point that's coming in for a 7.7 inch device and being so sluggish. Uh, we'll get more into that with the comparisons as well. That wraps up our hardware tour for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 from Verizon. If you have any comments, please leave them below. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>